Welcome to this edition of India Means Innovation, where we discuss the technologically complex innovations coming out of India. Today we have with us an exciting ultra deep tech startup from India called Cupi AI. And we have Nagendra Nagraj, founder and CEO of Cupi AI with us. Welcome Nagendra. Thanks, thank you very much. Q pi AI. Q is quantum and AI is AI. What is the pi for? Pi is the human ingenuity. See, we are combining quantum and AI. See, the, the main theme of a company is intelligence modeling, intelligence compute. Compute here is quantum and uh, modeling is AI. And we are combining these two with a human ingenuity. So, pi is a human ingenuity. Today, the innovation that we are going to discuss um, has to deal with um, digital simulation and digital simulation is at the core of the SDX world, the software defined everything world. All digital design, digital twins, digital simulation is mathematics at its core, extremely compute intensive. Let's say a car collision digital simulation. How long does this simulation take? So if you look at uh, the complete scenarios of the collision, Okay, so it's extremely complex and uh, it may take uh, anything from uh, a few days to a few weeks. We have a legacy software to simulate this. The time can be reduced drastically. And the innovation you all have come up with a solver for such uh, scenarios. How long does the simulation take there? See, uh, one of the simulations we have run in a real world is uh, which used to take 48 hours. We were able to complete in 30 minutes. 48 hours to 30 minutes, that's 96 96 times, x faster. 96 times faster. Yes, yes. And yes. how did you manage this? See, what happens is uh, when you have large number of variables, like say millions of variables to um, optimize in uh, simulations or in, in a certain other problem, which is combinatorial optimization problem, okay, and or it's an NPR problem, and it end up becoming a hard problem to solve, the combinatorial optimization problem to solve. And the solutions what we have is uh, we formulate a problem in a different way, but we use uh, something which is quantum inspired. Uh, we use a, we formulate the problem as an Ising problem, which is a thermodynamic uh, uh, formulation of the problem, which has Ising's represent energy levels. And the solution for this is a very standard cubo, quadratic unconstrained binary optimization. So when we formulate this, uh, not only the solution is quicker, but you get a better solution. So you reformulate the basic structure of mathematics itself. So the computation complexity on when you run on a different kinds of computer like quantum computer is very different from when you run a classical computer. Complexity is very high in classical computer and it's very low in quantum computers. So and that's how we can solve this very quickly and also we can get a better solution. What about AI? Where does AI come yes. in? Yes, I'll tell you. Uh, today if you look at our solution, it's always a combination of quantum and AI. It's not going to be quantum alone or AI alone. So uh, uh, the way this has to be done before we feed into Cubo, Cubo is a solver. So before you feed into Cubo, there has to be a pre-processing done. And that's our secret sauce. And what we're doing there is we're using AI heavily to make sure that the problem is reduced to such a state that it can be solved optimally. See, there are two things here. Time is one of the factors. It takes longer, so we reduce the time but also the quality of solutions. Your innovation does almost 100x faster. Thousand is also possible on real quantum computer. Does it reduce the compute requirement? Compute requirement also because what happens is since we are using AI as a front end that will reduce the overall space and that will reduce the compute requirement. So how much does the compute requirement come so down? We by? have uh, seen at least uh, almost 60% which has a direct impact on um, sustainability. Absolutely. In fact, even SGD sustainability goals, quantum computer ticks all the boxes, all the boxes, either discovering a new material or actually reducing the uh, emission of the gases or actually reducing, uh, you know, the amount of electricity consumed. So what you're saying is what appears to the outside world as um, a problem like supply chain, logistics, or creating new materials. At its core, it is ma a mathematical problem. Absolutely, yes. When you, when you see the, 
what what does a computer do it just solves the mathematical problem and what we are saying is you are using a computer uh, which really is not efficient in solving those problems neither in formulating them properly if you just formulate the mathematical problem properly and run on the right computer so this will give you the the best results for this big problems what we have so you bring in maths you bring in quantum physics you bring yes. in ai you bring in gpus quantum computing yes. into it to solve these mathematical problems yes. more efficiently absolutely faster yes. with lesser compute power yes. required yes. higher impact on sustainability yes. can you tell me about the tech stack required for a company like yours yes so if you look at uh, we are working on uh, superconducting qubits which required to be cooled to 7 millikelvin or 10 millikelvin 7 to 10 millikelvin, millikelvin. So that is absolute zero minus 273 yes, degrees yes yes that is cooler than interstellar space yeah. so we need a cryogenics so for example if you look at our own facility here uh, there is a quantum computer there is a dilution fridge and there is a compressor room and if you go down basement there is a chiller okay all these things are connected then we have the the chip superconducting chip at the bottom and we have a different temperature in the dilution fridge all the way to 7 millikelvin to 4k then to a room temperature so that means the compute signal has to go rf signal the, the way we control is through rf okay it's like a 5g mobile that is controlling the radio frequency yes radio frequency and it's like 6 to 9 gigahertz and then it always all the ways to go to quantum chip which is at 7 millikelvin and it has to I uh, give the signal out i mean this is a stack on the hardware and the software we do require the system software which runs on the rf the language that the digital world communicate with the quantum world is through rf pulses just imagine that your program uh, usually when you run it through classical compute it has to be just converted into assembly and assembly get executed through byte code and that's about it but here uh, the as you have to the program will generate an assembly that should be get generated to rf pulses and that will talk to quantum computer and then you get rf pulses and then you have to get the software back right the signals back and that's the complexity that we have dealing with it's very very different from the classical compute on the software side you need to have a robust system software which actually divides classical and quantum we we can't say this only will run quantum it's always with the classical it's always hybrid you will have to have a scheduler which actually separates quantum and classical run quantum on the quantum computer classical on a gpu cpu cluster and then has to combine the results it's a very complex scheduler that we need to have and on top of that we have applications like pharma material logistics opt okay this will be running on top of that so that's a kind of stack we have and uh, we have built our own controller called kipai sense which is rf controller of quantum computer and we are optimizing more and uh, we also try to put error correction decoder on that so this is more complex than a gpu currently gpus are inefficient to do the error correction we need a dedicated chip okay so this is a complexity of a stack we have so you are designing your own chip yes so we are designing multiple chips one is a superconducting chip which is a qpu and other is a error correction decoder which is a digital chip and all of this is being designed here by your team in bangalore this involves entire uh, you know innovation in a computing not only uh, on the physical layer but also the software the os the scheduler and also networking and in all of this you are racing to be the best in the world absolutely no doubt about that yes that's our vision that's our vision this is a great great example of india means innovation Thank you Nagendra and congratulations thanks a lot thanks a lot and thank you very much